With Father's Day just around the corner, we wanted to create some items that had a masculine feel, but also could extend past Father's Day and be used for a variety of other occasions. Um, today, in this video, we're going to put together our compass, gift, or treat box, whatever you want to use it for. And uh, this would be great for Father's Day, especially um, if Dad likes to travel um, or likes the outdoors. Um, you could give this to a boy or girl scout, um, someone that's going on a trip, maybe a student that's studying abroad. Um, so many possibilities for this. And um, it's actually very quite, um, very quite, it's quite simple to put together. Um, so let's just, let's just dive right in here. And let's take a look at what I have in front of me. <clears throat> I have the um, one piece that creates our lid. And our lid is going to feature a compass. We're gonna glue that on there and we've got um, an actual like old fashioned looking compass. We're gonna throw a rosette on top of that and make it really pretty. So um, it doesn't really matter where we start. I'm gonna just start by taking these two pieces and just gluing them together. Now on this, I took a, a red orange ink and just kind of ran it along the edge to give it a sort of distressed feel. Also distressed this piece in a blue, which um, just kind of just sort of just darkened the edges, which is pretty much what we're looking for here. So we're gonna glue this right on top and you just wanna make sure that you're matching up all the little arrows. So let's do that. Let's just get this piece glued into place and then we'll construct our little actual compass or the, the magnetic portion that twirls around, I should say. Let's get our glue on this and keep in mind that there's a little hole in the center. And we wanna just make sure that we get all the little arrows nice and lined up perfectly. Okay, there we go. And even if it's not totally perfect, it's still gonna look nice, even if it has a little bit of a, a drop shadow effect on there from the color that's underneath it. And a little bit of glue that popped out there. <clears throat> and I'm using a little brayer here to help me more evenly uh, get, my, get my piece on there. Okay. All right, so that looks good. And I guess, you know, we should probably just glue this down while it's flat. I think it's gonna be a lot easier to do. And all you wanna do is just make sure that you get this nice and centered. So kind of get a general idea of where you're gonna place it. And, and go ahead and get it down. And we'll get our glue on this piece here. I'm gonna work on the larger areas first, and then we'll work the exterior, because that is probably more important that that exterior, or the perimeter, I should say, really stays in place. And I'll do a few lines here between the little cutouts on the compass. Gotta kind of work quick because this quick dry is true to its name and will dry fairly quickly. Okay, now when you're when you're putting this down, try to get the areas where you don't have um, any cutouts in the corners so that it's somewhat. I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Let me just get this down. Okay, because we're, we're going to fill these in, these little areas here with north, south, east, and west. So these little blank areas here, try to get those lined up with a corner. Okay. All right. So we can go ahead and grab our letters and get those in place. I'm just going to use little dots here on this. I don't want to overdo it on this and get everything spilling out. So just 
take your, your letter and center it. It's going to overlap. You want it kind of coming off of the edge on both sides a little bit. Try to line it up nicely. Okay, let's get our south in place down here. Now, if you have someone that's directionally challenged, you can mix up the letters to confuse them even more and have them believe that south is this way. I'm kidding, you don't want to do that. Okay, and then we'll put our east here and west on the left. It would be really funny if I messed that up. That would not be a fun. Okay, and we're gonna put we're gonna put east like this. Okay, so they're all gonna be like that. Okay. And let's get our west in place. Just making sure that I have my texture side up on the W since it could technically work either way. All right. Oh no. Come here, you. And get our W in place. That looks good. The red on the yellow with the nice inking looks really sharp. Okay. All right, so we're going to put the rosette on um, later because we still need to assemble our actual lid. And what I'm going to do before we put our panels on is I'm going to get all of these folded and ready for their final formations. And really, I think the, the lid is probably the most um, involved piece, but even with that said, it's really not that difficult. Okay, so that being said, um, because this piece goes together fairly easily, I would probably spend a little time doing some inking just to jazz this piece up even more. Okay, so we've got these panel pieces here. Okay, there's one for each side, and we're just gonna go around and get this all glued into place to really decorate this. And I hit, uh, hit these panels with a blue, and I'm sure a brown would work nicely, or even uh, just something dark, something darker than the paper that that you're using. And I believe this is all graphic 40, well, maybe not all of it. I think this is graphic 45 paper. So is this over here and then that. That I'm not sure about. I don't think that's graphic 45. But either way, it's, it has a real graphic 45 feel. Now these panels that I'm putting down, by the way, um, you wanna make sure that you're leaving a little bit of a border around um, around this piece. So there's a little bit of blue showing through, hopefully equally on all sides. Okay, and that's gonna, it's gonna thicken this lid up nicely, make it feel nice and durable. And I'm sure that uh, whoever you give this to will keep this as a nice little keepsake. Maybe they can put little Polaroid pictures in there ticket stubs from their travels. Uh, not sure if a postcard would fit in there, but um, when you present it to them, you can put little treats in there. Um, you know, maybe a gift card for their travels. Uh, maybe you have uh, a little map of the area that they're going to. Uh, there's so many things, I guess. <clears throat> Could even go and um, because of TSA rules, you're only allowed to bring you know X amount of ounces of liquid on a flight. You can go get them little mini toothpastes, um, little shampoos. If you need, or if they wear contact lenses, you can get them little contact lens fluids. 
that you can put in there, throw a little bit of tissue paper in there. Um, maybe a luggage tag would fit in there nicely. I'm just trying to think. I just I was just in Orlando, so traveling and having to know what you can and can't bring are fresh on my mind. <laughs> you know, what's really funny is the TSA has a website where they tell you what you can and can't bring on the plane. And it's surprisingly very thorough and funny. Did you know that they allow Harry Potter wands on flights on carry-on? Okay, all right, so that's um, mostly done. Uh, all we're gonna do now is we're gonna put glue on each of these little triangular tabs and we're gonna glue them to the neighboring piece. And what I like to do is, I like to just kind of run that glue all the way out to the edge, just so that I make sure that I get a good bond. Okay, and just connect that nicely so that it's nice and flush, and nice and lined up. And just hold it in place until it sets. Good, and we'll just move on, and we're just gonna repeat that process all the way around until our lid is all put together. And I'm kinda making a mess here. Okay, I'll just get that lined up. I'm gonna have to do it this way so I can see it better. Here we go. And just make sure you've got that glue all the way down to the bottom as well. And just hold that in place. The cool thing about these, uh, when we're using these vintage-y looking papers, uh, if you make a boo-boo here or there, it doesn't look as bad. Okay. Get that glue right out to the edge and just work your way around, connecting these pieces together. Okay. And there we go. Halfway there, pretty much. Same thing, this is a pretty repetitive process, so if you get the gist of this, feel free to uh, fast forward as I'm really not gonna be um, doing anything different here, aside from maybe you know sharing a tip here or there if something comes to mind, but I think this, this process is pretty monotonous and I don't know that there's much I can tell you other than uh, when we're gluing these tabs like this, the reason that I'm running my finger like that on the glue is because I, I like to get that glue all the way out to the very edge so that I have a clean seam and so that everything stays together nicely and it just looks nice and professional. And of course, you always want to just kind of hold it in place and wait till it sets completely before moving on. And I'll also tell you that less glue is probably better just you got to get enough on there but sometimes if you put too much on it takes forever for it to set and then it can lead to things not looking as as good as they can okay so getting close here to getting this guy done i'm just trying to make sure that i get this all into the on camera for you sometimes uh it's a lot easier if I didn't have to show you on camera because then I could get my face in there. But surprisingly, we've got a pretty good track record here of having to um, assemble things with the camera in mind and making sure that you're not staring at the top of my head the whole time. And um, surprisingly, the projects still come out really good looking with very few mistakes, and I try not to edit the mistakes out when I make them, 
unless it's something really, um, unless it's something that I don't want to leave in because I don't want to confuse you. So I, if that kind of stuff happens, I will edit that out just for your sake. And uh, so I want you guys to make the best possible looking project as well so that you guys love doing this stuff because we get so many comments about, all right, so anyway, um, one last tab here. I'll get back to what I was saying here in just a second. I just don't wanna, don't wanna blab too much. All right, so we're just gonna close that up. Anyway, it's just saying that we get a lot of comments saying that uh, the videos are very helpful and it's one of the main reasons that you guys enjoy making these projects, aside from the fact that they're beautiful. And that's uh, thanks to the one and only Mr. Gutman, who's our art director, and Diana, who digitizes everything and makes them SVGs so that we can all enjoy them with our cutting machines. There's our beautiful lid. That is looking awesome. Came out perfect, sit, sit, sitting very nicely and evenly. Um, the compass portion looks like it's pretty centered. I've got my north, south, east, and west right at the corners. Um, so that's beautiful. So let's take a look at um, these pieces here. Okay, what we're gonna do is All right, what we're gonna do is grab these two pieces here, okay? And I'm gonna take this piece and glue it on top of this piece. Okay, so just get your glue on this and make sure that you get some glue out to that, out to that very tip of that tip. <laughs> just get it out to the tip of the tip, please. Okay, and then we're gonna glue this onto this piece here. I'm hoping that I can get this video done in just the 30 minutes that uh, my camera allows per segment. I have to film in 30 minute increments and then edit everything together. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna use my brayer, flatten that out. Okay, so that's it for that piece. Really simple. Now this piece here, I've already sort of taken and started scoring it. It's gonna come out like this for you, okay? So you just wanna make sure that you take these pieces, just tuck them under, fold those under, okay? And the best way that I found to, to score these, these points here is just to kinda uh, create a little chicken beak like that. Well, I can't wait to go traveling and just do that, okay? And then what we're gonna do to form this is just glue these tabs to themselves on the back. So all you need to do is put, you can put glue here, that's fine. Doesn't, doesn't matter if it goes here or on the underside of the other piece, but you're just gonna flip that over like that and just hold that down for a second while it sets. Try to flatten it out as much as you can. There we go. So that your top looks like that. Okay, make sure that that's set before you move on so it doesn't come undone. Okay, then we can go ahead and put glue on the next piece here. And I would try to get that glue out to the edge too, just so that it sits nicely for us. Okay, and then just push that down and hold it. You don't need to get it all the way out to the edge. Just push it over or put it on top of the other piece until you have a nice even little line there or even border, I guess we can call it, all the way from the top to the bottom here. Okay. And I probably, I guess it doesn't really matter which way you do it. It's all gonna be the same, so. I'm just gonna go this way and put glue on this section here. Okay, get that glue right out to the edge there. And 
fold that over. And just hold that in place for just a minute. There we go. And we're gonna actually take this whole thing and we're gonna pop dot it onto the top of our, our compass here just to give this thing a little more dimension. All right, so last section here. Now, this, like I said, this, this one's gonna go together pretty quick. I think it's gonna go together faster than the card, actually. So this would be a nice little, nice little project to work on, even a last minute sort of thing, since it's uh, not that complex yet. Uh, but it's really, um, you know, it has that wow factor to it. So it's really cool. Okay. All right, so there's our little shape, which is really pretty. Okay, and then we've got these accent pieces. And these accent pieces are gonna go right here. Okay, it's gonna give this shape some contrast and some additional dimension. So I'm just gonna flip this over and get my glue on the bottom here or on the underside of it, I should say. And just very carefully line it up with one of the sides. It's only gonna work on one side because of its shape. And do your best to get that nice and aligned. Okay, that looks nice. Grab the next one, that next one's gonna go here. So they're gonna alternate. It's gonna go from this pattern to the solid color, pattern, solid color, and so on and so forth, all the way around. And that is going to take a very pretty but sort of boring cardstock and turn it into uh, a really cool dimensional little piece. Okay, I'm just going to work my way around. Next one. Very cool. Very, very cool piece. And just make sure that you're getting your glue all the way out to the edges so that it sits nice and flat on all sides. If you need to, you can always go in and fix it by just painting a little bit of glue on the underside, which I'm gonna do here real quick. I'll show you. I just tore off a little piece of cardstock, some scrap cardstock. I'm gonna throw some glue on here. And uh, I think it's this one here. I didn't get enough glue right on the tip. And it's kind of sticking up. So I'm just gonna paint some glue under it and then just push that down and give it a little extra, a little extra love so that it sits nicely. And then I've got this little area here that I didn't get enough glue on and maybe this tip here too. And I'm just gonna hold that down in those two spots where I maybe didn't get enough glue. Okay, that leaves just one more. And then we're gonna, we're gonna put these two pieces together and then finish up our little compass with the rosette. And then all we need to do is make the, the base of the box, which is pretty simple. So get that in place right there, just like we did the last three times. Get it nice and aligned. And hold that down until it sets. There we go. Cool. Okay, so this piece here is gonna be offset like this. Okay, so we need to glue this to this piece trying to make sure that we get it nice and centered there. Okay. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna need to put just some drops of glue right here, like so, on these four sides. You can't really go down too far because it's, it's really not gonna have anything to stick to. So do your best to get that nice and centered. I'm gonna pick this up so that I can use my hand as a table and just get that nice and centered on there. Do your best to get that centered. And once 
once we have it properly lined up, I think that looks pretty darn close. You can just kind of, oops. Yeah, this is why it helps to not have to do things on camera so that I can get an eagle's eye view of what I'm doing. There we go, okay. I'm just gonna push down like that. Just let that hold for a few seconds while it gets a grip. There we go. It's eh, slightly off. All right, I gotta be a little more patient with this piece while it sets. Otherwise, it's not going to look good. Looks like I got it to grip okay. So we're gonna take the, uh, I mean, you can do this however you want, but I think we're gonna take the dimensional parts here and line those up with the north, south, east, and west. So I'm gonna flip this over and I've got some foam circles. You can use foam squares, you can use pop dots, whatever you wanna use is fine. I'll just throw these just in these four little sections here, just to elevate it. I don't think you need to extend them out too far. You want them kind of tucked away anyway, so that they're not overly visible. You want them to do their job, but you don't want them to uh, be seen. Okay. There we go. And we'll peel that off. And at this point, it's okay to throw this on there right now because the only thing we need to do after this is get the rosette in place. So get that lined up, north, south, east, and west. Make sure that you've got it nice and centered and spaced evenly. There we go. And that looks pretty sharp. Okay, so our lid is almost done. And as you can see here, uh, I've added um, some gold pearls um, just off the, right off on the corner of where the letters are. And it's got some red pearls here in the little circular cutouts. Okay, so that's looking sharp. And um, let's take a look at our rosette. Now I've taken this and I've um, inked it in a blue and what we're going to do is i mean there's a couple ways of doing this you can you probably want to use um, hot glue for this um, it just makes quicker work of it and all i did all you want to do is just do it like an accordion fold so you're when it's flat like this you're just going to fold it down and then up you're just going to kind of do an accordion fold. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm just gonna fold it like that. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue two ends together. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put glue on this piece here. And I kind of overdid it there. And I'm just gonna glue this piece to this piece, like that. Okay, give that a few seconds to set. So now that it's kinda glued together, you wanna kinda bring it all together. Actually, you can just kinda flatten it out now and it should turn into that, a little rosette there. And then we've got these two pieces here, and these are kind of gonna act like a little stabilizer. This red piece is gonna go underneath, and it's gonna kind of hold it together. So what you can do, you can do this a few ways. What I'm probably gonna do is, and this is, rosettes are kind of, can be kind of trying sometimes, but. This is why the hot glue is probably the way to go. Let me just put this flat again. Once you get it flat, it kind of comes together. And let me see here real quick. I don't think it matters which side is the top or bottom. It really doesn't. So what I'm gonna do while I'm holding it like this, I'm gonna just cake on some glue right on top here. 
a nice thick amount. And again, if you have hot glue, I'd recommend using it. It will make quick work of this, but I'm trying to be old school and hip and I'm using regular glue. And you wanna kind of push it all together, uh, kind of applying force on all the sides here just to kind of keep it in place so it's nice and tight. You want it to form a little circle in there. And I'm gonna hold this piece down like that until this thing is completely set. You don't wanna release it prematurely because then it's gonna be a mess. Okay, and there we go. We have our rosette. And then we can top it off with this little yellow piece. So I'm gonna just put glue right in the center here. You can see that nicely. And I may need to spread that glue out a little bit more onto the surface. And just cover that up like so. Make sure it's nice and centered. And just press and hold that down for a second. There we go. Okay, so there's our really cute looking rosette. And um, we've got a nice hole in here so that when we place it on top of our compass, it has something to sit on. Okay, so actually, you know what? Um, I've got a little bit of bling that we're gonna put on this. I'm gonna put a little rhinestone on it. I think that should fit nicely and per actually perfectly on there. So I'm gonna put a drop of glue on here and drop a rhinestone on top of that to kind of complete the look. That's really pretty. And then I can flip this over and I would fill this with, uh, you should probably use hot glue. Pop some hot glue right in that hole and then pop it right on top of the point of your little compass. And again, that hot glue will dry nice and quick for you and keep it all in place. I'm just gonna pop my head on top here just to make sure this is nice and level. But for my purposes, that should hold nicely. Okay, so the lid is done. I can put that off to the side. And let's take a look at our base. And our base is very simple, actually. We've got four pieces like this, and then one piece like this, and one piece like this. One of these has a little L cut into it, which you see right there, that is a liner. So we're going to uh, put that inside of our box base last once, uh, once we get the sides all assembled. And you wanna begin by taking all of these pieces and just folding everything at the score marks. Okay, like that. Just like that. Okay, and then we can put our panels on next. Okay, so this, these pieces here where the tabs are at the bottom, that's your bottom, this is the top, okay? This, we're gonna use these tabs to connect it to this guy here. Okay, so just remember, this is where your bottom is, this is your top because these panels that we put on have little notches cut into them. And these notches go on the bottom or towards the bottom. They, they sit like this, basically. Okay, so let's just get those in place. That's gonna stiffen this up nicely, and make it a little more rugged. And we'll put the box base together and uh, that's pretty much it for this project. And when you place these down, it helps that we folded everything at the score marks because that helps us see our borders a little bit better. I'm gonna use my brayer to make quick work of getting these in place. Had a little excess glue there. I'm just gonna rub that off. Um, I've heard of this invention called a glue eraser. I've yet to pick one up. Just got other things going on and I try not to have to rely on too many accessories and tools. 
I think you can make a lot of beautiful things with minimal supplies. Not that I don't like going out and, and getting new stuff at the craft store, but I just think about if I ever move, how much stuff I'm going to have to pack away and... Okay. All right, so first one's done. Let's move on to the next one here. And again, just make sure that these are at your bottom and that these little cutouts are facing down or towards the bottom so that we don't make any boo-boos. And just work that glue out to the edges there. And use those little score marks as your guides to help you visualize the natural border that should occur once we get these in place. Okay, and just moving right along. Now this paper, I don't think this is graphic 45 either. I'm gonna have to find out where where Ron sourced these papers from. They seem just a little too thin to be graphic 45 quality, but it's a really nice pattern that works beautifully with this project. So, and we did hit this with a red ink. It's almost to give it like that, that coffee stain look of an old map. So that works really well. Let's get this glue on here and we'll be done before you know it. And I did have to run a, a second recording, which means that we're just slightly over 30 minutes at this point, but it shouldn't be much longer. This last part's gonna go together real quick and there's really not much else to do, but throw some, throw some rhinestones right in those little square areas to kind of finish this thing off and then will be done. Okay, nice and centered, nice even border all the way around. I really like the brayer. Okay, last one, last two pieces. Again, make sure your tabs are at the bottom and that when you're putting this on, the little notches are at the bottom as well. I, I really think this will be a very useful file for uh, people of all walks of life because who doesn't love to travel or who you know everyone's traveled somewhere and maybe uh, I don't know so many little ideas come to mind let's say you have an anniversary or something and um, you want to give your husband a little box full of photos from a trip that you guys took that maybe you never developed the film or never printed things out or who knows. So many, so many ideas come to mind and so many that haven't yet come to mind that I'm sure would be relevant. Okay, so next step is to take these pieces and join them together. So what we're gonna do is just get our glue on these tabs here, and then a nice little line right up to the edge. And I'm gonna run that glue right out to the very edge so that we have a nice clean finish. Okay, and what we can do is actually just put these right on top of each other like this. And that's gonna help us with alignment and precision. And I'm just gonna push that down. I can actually use my brayer there too. I feel like I'm ironing or something. Okay, get that excess glue off there. That thing really works nicely because it really gives a pressure that I don't think I'd be able to give with my finger. And it's nice and even, keeps the paper nice and flat. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty darn good. Okay, let's grab the other piece here and just repeating the same process. Glue on the tab, a nice line of glue out to the edge. I'm gonna fold this down and run my finger right up to the edge. And then I can just take this, line it up like that. 
and I'm kind of running my finger along the little tab pieces there because that also helps me um, make sure that everything is lined up perfectly. And I'm just going to bray that. Wipe off the excess. There we go. Okay. Oh, that sounded weird. And one more time here, and then we'll join it all together. Okay, let me fold that down. I need a little more glue here. And just run that up to the edge there. Okay. Get that lined up. Make sure that all of your tabs are at the bottom. Okay, let me fold that over. And I'm just kind of running my finger along these tabs here to make sure that they're nice and aligned. I'll put that down, give it a good, give it a good shimmy with my, with my brayer. Okay. So we have all these pieces connected, which means that all that's left to do at this point is throw some glue on this final tab. And get that right up to the edge. And we can totally work on this flat right now. Just tuck that tab underneath and lay it out right on top of the other side here what is that? and that looks nice and lined up give it a good give it a good push okay and as you can see here that's the end result there we go okay so all that's left to do now is put our bottom on and again, make sure that you grab the one that does not have the L on it. This one has the L on it. I'm gonna put that off to the side. This is your actual bottom. And I think the best thing to do to get this to look as perfect as possible is start with one tab. And in the past, I've called this our anchoring tab because it kind of holds everything in place to make the rest of the job easy. So get your glue on there and then just line up this tab with one of the sides here. This is a symmetrical piece, so it doesn't really matter which side you put it on. Just make sure you get it nice and centered and right up to the edge. Okay, make sure that you have it nice and aligned on the left and on the right. And just kind of hold that down for a second so that that edge gets a good hold. And then you can flip it over onto your table and push down from the inside. Okay. There we go. So we've got our little anchor piece in place. And that looks nice and slick. Okay. And then this is where, this is where I don't want you to worry about not being perfect. Okay. Because this, uh, it's, it's a lot of tabs and it's kind of a flimsy piece right now. We're gonna do our best. We're gonna put it down and I'm gonna anticipate that we're probably gonna to have to go in and fix this up a little bit using the little painting method to get those seams to look nice and clean. And I'm okay kind of globbing the, uh, globbing the glue on the center there because we need as much density in the glue as we can get so it doesn't dry up too quick. And then get that glue right up to those edges there so that maybe, just maybe, we can get it right the first time. But uh, let's just be realistic here and just uh, hope for the best and know that if it doesn't all sit perfectly that we can go in and fix it. And it's still gonna look perfect, okay? So let's clean our hands off and we're just gonna drop this lid onto our project here. And don't worry about it. Don't worry about the glue getting kind of crazy. 
start with one side, maybe the opposite side of where it was anchored and get that in place and then kind of just shimmy the rest of this around. Okay, until you've got all the sides in place and you may have to kind of push to scoot that out a little bit. Okay. And I can already tell that I'm gonna have to go in and add some glue to some of these little areas where maybe the glue dried or I didn't add enough pressure initially or something like that, that would cause this to not glue down perfectly. But you know, it's pretty good actually, all things considered. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, there's some areas there that I may need to go in and kind of clean up a little bit, but that's okay. Let's take a look and see. All right, so let me grab a scrap piece of paper here. It's just a scrap piece of cardstock, and I'm just gonna throw some glue on it, nice and thin. Just thin it out, but also make sure that you get some good coverage on there. And just kind of go around the box and check out any areas that where that, that bottom maybe isn't sitting completely flat and just stick that scrap piece of paper in there with the glue and just paint some glue on there and just hold that little area down that's popping up. Okay, and hold it down until it sets. Shouldn't take forever, should go pretty quick actually. And there you can see that that's a nice clean seam. And of course, because there's so many little tabs here in such a odd shape that you may need to go in and clean up some other areas too. And that's totally fine because it's gonna look great when it's done. Okay, I have another little area here that needs a little extra love. I'll just kind of lift it up a little bit and just paint some, paint some glue to the underside and just push and hold that little area down until it sets. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty happy with, I'm pretty happy with that. And um, at this point, what you can do is take some glue and just kinda, I would probably put it along the tabs on the outside and then maybe just a little bit around the inside. Take your liner. Just pop it right in, push it down. Should fit pretty snug. And that's gonna kinda reinforce the bottom and make this thing nice and durable for us. Okay, so there's our beautiful base and our beautiful lid. Should fit on there nicely. And our box is pretty much complete. Again, these little areas here, we have some, I have some square um, rhinestones that we're going to put in these little slots here. And I'm gonna glue these down. I'm just trying to kind of show you how that's gonna look, but you can see how pretty that looks. So I hope you guys enjoyed putting this project together with me. I think it came out awesome. Um, and if you did, I'd love if you took a minute to visit our YouTube page to hit that subscribe button. And um, can't wait to see your version of this box. If you do make this, go ahead and visit the official Dreaming Tree Facebook page. Just do a search for Dreaming Tree Group in your Facebook search at the top. Uh, we've got a, a thriving community of amazing paper artists and crafters that are, are, are making all sorts of uh, wonderful Dreaming Tree projects and sharing them with the rest of our fans. And we, we'd love for you to join in. So again, I appreciate you hanging out with me and I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. 
watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.